Manitowoc is a beautiful city located along the coast of Lake Michigan. It is a city filled with beautiful sights, like the Manitowoc Lighthouse. People from all over come to visit Manitowoc and Wisconsin. All around Manitowoc, you can find the presence of art, like these murals. Built in the 1890s, the museum was a home before becoming an art museum. Joseph and Mary Vilas built the mansion between 1891 and 1893. Joseph Vilas, mayor of Manitowoc from 1893 to 1895, was a railroad and mining entrepreneur. Mary Vilas died of heart disease in 1901. Joseph Vilas lived in the house until his death in 1905. The house was empty for a few years until Reinhard Rahr bought it in 1910. He put in electricity and city water. The Rahr family moved in and lived in the house. Reinhard Rahr died in 1921. His widow Clara donated the house to the city of Manitowoc in 1941 to be used for educational and civic purposes as a museum and a civic center. Because of their gift of the house to the city, the Rahr family is used as one of the names in the museum, Rahr West. The Rahr West is a department of the city of Manitowoc, which means that the building and all of the art in our collection belongs to the people of Manitowoc. Hello and welcome to the Rahr West Art Museum, a museum dedicated to the preservation of and sharing art with its community. My name is Hannah Green, and I will be your tour guide for today. Let's take a look at the inside of the house and the works of art in the museum. This large room is called the Central Gallery. One side was used as a welcoming space by the front door. The space on the other side of the room was a formal dining room. The kitchen was located to the right of the large windows you see at the end of the room. The central gallery today is used to showcase some of our best modern art. Some examples of art in this area are Stuart Davis's Downtown Street and Georgia O'Keeffe's Birch and Pine Tree No. 2. The same artist, Walt Kuhn, created these two paintings in the central gallery in the same year and have basically the same subject matter yet they are extremely different. Take a moment to look at them closely. How did the artist use paint to create shapes and space in each work? What is the overall emotional impact of these styles? Now might be a good time to pause the video and discuss. On the left, in the picture, Kuhn works in a more traditional style of painting. The colors of the subject are true to life and generally depicted in a realistic style. On the right, the background and the subject have been reduced to flat areas of color. Kuhn experimented with several styles of art during his life as many other artists did, like the famous artist Pablo Picasso. This is also a picture of the Central Gallery in 1966. What room of the house do you think this was, and what do you think it was used for? This room was set up to be like a parlor from about 1910 and the furniture was from when the Rahr family lived in the house. This room demonstrates the taste and the social status of the Rahr family. Look at the fancy furniture, the wall coverings, and the chandelier. You might be thinking how this room looks similar or different to your own living room today. What don't you see here? 
What do you think the kids who lived here would do in this room? Now would be a great time to pause the video and discuss. John and Ruth West gave a lot of art that we will see in the next few rooms to the museum. Ruth West was very interested in developing a collection of art for the community. This room currently features art done by women. Here are some popular pieces done by women. First, you can see a painting over the sofa done by Joanne Pullman. You can see a little tiny picture above the cat on the couch of a cat on a couch. What fun art can be sometimes. This is another popular piece done by a female artist. You can see a young girl holding a cat done by Alice Kent Stoddard. What do you see in this painting and how is this painting different from the one before? Yet again, another popular piece done by a female artist. It is called Yellow Image Edition 2 by Doris White. This is a more abstract piece. Maybe we can't tell what it is about. What do you think this piece is about? These are two pieces done by Mary West. First, you have a painting of Luxembourg Gardens in Paris, and then you have her sketchbook as well. The fun thing about art is that you can take your sketchbook and your paint and you can go wherever you want in the world and create amazing art. This room features portraits from the collection. What is a portrait in art? A portrait is a piece of art featuring a person as the main subject. Here are some popular portraits in the museum. First, we have Rembrandt Peale's portrait of Anne Foster Swift from 1836. Next, we have William Paxton's The White Bird. Let's take a closer look at these two paintings. What do you think these two portraits have in common? On the landing, we have more landscapes on view. This time, they're all images of water. A few of them are of the Manitowoc Lighthouse. Have you ever been to the Manitowoc Lighthouse before? Here are a few examples of the Manitowoc Lighthouse. First, we have the View from Maritime Bay by Ron Stokes, and then we have the Manitowoc Lighthouse by Ruth Rar Vinton. The amazing thing about art is that you can take your materials with you wherever you go. Whether it be in your classroom or outside, you can make beautiful art anywhere, even the Manitowoc Lighthouse. The rooms on the second floor of the house were mostly bedrooms used by members of the household. The rooms on the third floor were used as servants' quarters and guest rooms. Today we use the second floor to display some of the smaller collections of the museum. of a water closet that the Rars would have had in their home. This is technically a bathroom. In your own home, what does your bathroom look like? What do you think this bathroom is missing? The first room we come to on the left of the landing is the ivory room. Martin Schwartz was a local businessman. He traveled quite a lot for work and collected these ivory sculptures from China and gave them to the museum later on. What is ivory? Ivory is sourced from the teeth and tusks of animals like elephants, hippos, and narwhal. You can tell by the curved stances of the figures on the right that they were carved from elephant tusks. 
It is important to know where these materials come from and how it affects our world. Because of the great demand for ivory sculptures like these, elephants have been poached, that is killed off, to the point where they are in danger of extinction. The next room in the museum is the doll room. The doll houses are reminiscent of what the Rar children might have played with. Besides the doll houses, there are a number and variety of different dolls in this room. This room features the work of Edward Marshall Bain, who crafted porcelain sculptures. This sculpture is of an eagle's nest containing two chicks representing the two centuries of American history and an egg representing the future, the next 100 years to come. Look at all of these beautiful porcelain sculptures. In this room, we feature gifts the city of Manitowoc has received from our sister city in Kamigawa, Japan. Look at this samurai doll with his swords and weapons. The Kamigawa room also includes examples of Japanese clothes called kimonos, Japanese watercolor paintings, Japanese fans, traditional pictures carved onto bamboo, and even a painting of a round traditional Japanese house. The final room in the museum is the wood carving room, which features the work of local sculptor Richard Young. The Kohler Foundation gifted these works to the museum in 2008. The museum has 139 examples of his work in our collection. In this picture, you can see a variety of wood carvings, including animals, people, and intricate boxes. The final exhibit that we would like to share with you is a small exhibit about the Sputnik crash. In September 1962, the Russian satellite Sputnik 4 re-entered the Earth's atmosphere and started to break down. A piece of this satellite crashed and landed right here in Manitowoc, just steps from the museum. This was the first time any man-made objects that had been sent into space survived re-entering the Earth's atmosphere and didn't completely burn up. It made Manitowoc world famous. There is a replica of the piece that was recovered right here at the Rar West Art Museum. The original went back to Russia after NASA did some testing on it. Thank you for exploring the mansion of the Rar West Art Museum with me today. I hope that you enjoyed it and learned something about the museum. When you come in with your families, you will get to be the tour guide with your new knowledge.